Hi and welcome to the video on inference for regression, chapter 27. This is one of our last units in the whole entire textbook. Yay, we're finally here. Um, so let's get started. So in this unit, we need to take a look at data more in that now our y values are going to be what we're focusing on instead of our x and that um, many times when we're looking at a normal model we've been looking at it from left to right well in this unit as you'll see here we're going to take a look at certain x values and the x values will vary or the, the values that you get for your um, response variable will vary per single um, explanatory var variable. So for each x, you're going to have a variation in your y values. So here's what I mean. Let's take a look at just females who are 5 feet tall. If you had a broad range of all females who are 5 feet tall, hopefully you get the idea that this will vary. In other words, there's a distribution of weights for all adult females who are 5 feet tall. Now, if you have a distribution, what we're saying in this unit, and this is the beauty of this unit, is that the distribution is normally distributed. Well, that we hope that it will be. So, if we take a look at 61 inches, or 62 inches, or 64 inches, what do you suppose will, will happen? Hopefully the same type of thing. However, in this one, as you might imagine, the weight for, for um, five foot four inch women would be slightly higher since as you, uh, as it, hopefully you understand, it's a, hopefully a linear progression here. As the height increases, the, the women will weigh more. So again, if we looked at 68 or or five foot eight inches, we would have a normal distribution of all of those females who are um, five foot eight. But where would you expect the true LSRL to be? And as we saw in class, it's the mean average of our Y values that we're really looking for to get the new LSRL. And the way that we would write that is mu sub y is equal to a, which is your y-intercept, or the true intercept, plus beta x, where beta is your slope. And what about your standard deviations of all of these normal distributions? Well, hopefully we understand that the standard deviations of all of these normal distribution should be the same. So what I'm, we're saying here is that the standard deviation of this normal model is the same exact standard deviation of this normal model, which is the same as this normal model, and so on. So here's more information about chapter 26. The mean response variable, mu sub y, has a straight line relationship with x your explanatory variable, so that mu sub y is equal to a, which is your true intercept, plus beta x, where beta is your slope. So slope of beta and intercept of alpha are unknown parameters. And for any fixed uh, value of x, so when you're looking at that five feet, there's that fixed value, that that fixed value at x, the response y varies according to the normal distribution. And obviously when repeated responses of y are independent of each other. So one woman's weight at 5 feet is going to be obviously different from another person who's 5 feet, or female in this case, who's 5 feet. And they may weigh something different. And that weight difference is independent of one another. And lastly, the standard deviation of y, sigma sub y, is the same for all values of x. And that's what we were talking about previously in just that last slide when we were talking about our standard deviations. We're going to 
right in here, right? We want the standard deviations to be the same. So he, that's what this last one's talking about. The standard deviation of y is the same for all values of x. So that sigma sub y is also known as an unknown parameter, but again, we're looking for the same of all of those values. The way that we would use our equation is y hat is equal to a plus bx. Now, please don't get this confused between this one here. This and this are two different equations. One has an a and a b. The other has an alpha and a beta. Whereas this will be our estimate and this is our true. So we're using this equation to estimate our true. Because sometimes we don't know all of that true or we don't want to look at all of that data and we will estimate using y hat. Okay, so y hat, using our estimate, has an a plus bx. So when we're comparing those, we're going to use the slope of b, which is this one here, of the LSRL, as an unbiased estimator of the true slope beta. Likewise, the intercept A of the LSRL is an unbiased estimator of the true intercept alpha. Standard error S, this is a lowercase s, and please be careful with the not getting this confused with capital S, capital E. Um, this is the lowercase s, this standard error is an unbiased estimator of the true standard error deviation. This is so the true standard deviation of y, which is sigma sub y. So here's what we use for s. s is equal to the square root of the summation of the difference in your y, so y minus y hat squared, all over n minus 2. Now that means y minus y hat, or your residuals, all over n minus 2. For degrees of freedom, since we're dividing by n minus 2, our degrees of freedom then are n minus 2. Okay, so let's go through um, a single problem and go through all of the uh, um, I guess nooks and crannies of it. The first thing that we need to start off with is our parameter, which is beta. We write our justifications, and again, the justifications are your conditions. Um, our textbook uses four, another textbook uses three, and that's what we're going to mention here, um, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, we need to take a look at the graphs when you're looking at your data here and to see if we actually have uh, our conditions met. So when you're looking at your residuals for your normal model and to see if they're normally distributed, there's a couple things that we need to look at. First, we need to make sure that our, um, let's see, when you look at type, now on you go to your stat plots and look in type, that's the sixth graph that's your normal probability plot, when that sixth graph, that one should look normal by making sure it's linear, that's here. We also need to make sure that your distribution, when you actually look at your scatter plot, that it's not clustered in one specific area, that it actually is spread out, and that you need to look at your residual plot and make sure that there's no pattern. And thirdly, we need to make sure that there's that's uh, the data is randomized and independent. Once those conditions are met, you may go on and do a linear regression t test, or depending on the problem that you're doing, you may have to do a um, linear regression t interval. So let's go and look at the t intervals. Our t interval formula is b plus or minus t star times se sub b. Now I'm going to pause here. Our time is running short on our um, 
video. So I'm going to pause here and come back in the next one.